telling our experience to the Philippines. Yeah, That's why we came here because they well, pictured a very beautiful life. life here. In Britain. In Britain. No, it's not the kind of life you have experienced. It's not the kind of work you have. And then they would say, oh, you've got lots of money, when in reality you don't, because all the money goes to bills and accommodations. You know? Okay, bills, accommodations. So there's an article, there's a, that's really great that you said that. There's an article in your packet called Greener Pastures. Yes. The whole idea that you're going to come to Greener, greener Pastures. Pastures. Because they don't want to tell that maybe, like us also, that maybe career-wise or money-wise, especially that the pounds went down, that we became a failure or career-wise, we don't have a nice career. Okay, so, it doesn't mean you're failures. It just means that you need to get on the right track yeah. to where you want to go. How would you What I wanted to say is that the Filipino community are coming, um, they come to this country or they go abroad because of the deep poverty back home. So whatever the risks there are in the different place that they go, they're, they're going to put that risk and they're going to accept whatever is there. But they're strong, so we have to, you know, uh, people should uh, c consider that. This country should consider the um, strength and tenacity of, of, of the Filipino and people, resilience, yeah. the resilience of the Filipino people, because they're, they're putting so much effort, cleaning, and at the same time, multitasking, you know, taking good care of the elders in this country, and then bringing life, bringing happiness. So I think the Filipino people deserve a better deal. Probably be getting OT, PT, and physio as well. The overseas Filipino workers can be found in 190 countries in 50,000 ocean uh, vessels around the world. So that's about 3,000 workers deployed daily from the Philippines. And about 1.3 million deployed in 2008. 8.2 million Filipinos overseas worldwide. So that's a huge number. In the UK, what you have in your um, handouts uh, says 116,000 overseas Filipinos in the UK. That's changed. Our latest count right now is about 200 plus now. So we are really growing uh, worldwide and in the UK. And uh, just like what ABSC Ben says, uh, a, Filip a Filipino in every country and in every continent around the globe. So, couple million now. We have identified top five issues that we have uh, during life. During, during the times of a &E, uh, not a &E, of PNA UK. It's adaptation and adjustment. Uh, the lack of proper orientation and information into life in the UK, unavailability of lifeline, which most of you have actually possibly experienced. You know, you have just actually been sent into the UK without any knowledge of what's in the UK, what to expect, who to call in when you have problems. It's adaptation, adjustment, and acculturization. That's one of the top most problems that we have um, in the list. On top of that, because of that lack of knowledge, then exploitation, abuse, and unfair treatment follows. These are the issue. On top of that, then we have continuing education and professional development as another problem. You know, just like what you have here, you could see you have the skilling. So what happens is you should get this skilled. You know, you have a lot of experience back home. You have 15 years of cardiothoracic. Coming into the UK, your healthcare. So it's this killing. That's one of the problems that we have been encountering. Um, I myself have personally experienced it. Um, I have two deg I have three degrees. I have uh, 15 years of a &E and I have four subspecialties in a &E. All went down the drain when I came into this country. So it's a personal experience really that I know each and every one of Filipinos is experiencing at the moment. Again, issue would be employment cases. Because of the lack of knowledge, the lack of information, they have been abused and they have been you know, thrown into the deep end. So again, that goes into employment cases as one of the major concerns. Well, not relating to employment, but again, we have labor and immigration cases, as well as one of the topmost concerns that we have actually dealt with. What is example of um, labor and immigration case? This would be visa concern. Somebody comes in employed by XYZ NHS for three years visa. 
decided I don't want to go to XYZ NHS and transfer to ABC NHS, not telling the UK Board of Immigration that you have changed employer. But again, remember your visa, initial visa is tied up to your sponsor. So that's, and the time comes when they have to renew their permanent, per, their visa or residency permit, they get denied. Because it is their um, culpability as well during that time that they change. They, they always say, doesn't matter, I have two years done my visa. It doesn't matter, even if you have 20, 20 as your visa deadline. The fact is, your visa is tied up to whoever sponsored you coming here. Your work permit, okay? So it doesn't matter, kahit na hindi pa mag-expire. Again, the common response of UK border agency is ignorance of the law is no excuse. Denied. First of all, I would like to start with what I expected when I came here. Um, I went through an, a consultancy agency which helped me go here. And as normal agencies, I had to pay a certain fee that was really high. But upon coming here to the UK, they were really nice to me. They um, accommodated me in their own home for two months until I got my own job. And once I got my own job, I moved out of their home and um, found found some place to rent together with my friend who works with me in the nursing home. So what I expected was um, the number of hours that I was um, allowed to do as a student and the pay rates. What I did not expect was the feelings that I had for um, doing this job for being a carer in a nursing home. Because for a while it was just fine with me. It was just like routine work. Once you learn the routine and do the washing and um, do everything accompanied with the job, it's just easier every day. But really, it's not like you're growing as a person. It's not happening. It's not like you're growing um, in your career. It's like that you're just stagnant in one place. So that really um, hurts my feelings whenever I go to work. And knowing that I cannot do anything um, that would progress my career. I know, like um, the other said before, that I can do more than what I do right now. And it's re just really frustrating for me to just be able to do what, um, what's just included in my job description as a carer. PNA UK was referred to me by one of my friends through his other friends. So I contacted them through email and um, after 24 hours, they were really quick in replying to me. They told me that um, I should send a CV because I told them that I was really interested in doing the ONP. Because as a, as a nurse here um, from another country, I'm required to do um, the overseas nurses program in order to be registered here and to have my pin of my own. So after a couple of months, unexpectedly, um, the president of PNA UK contacted me and said that I was shortlisted for an interview with one of um, a nursing home company that was well known. <coughs> So I was really happy about it, but I was not really expecting anything of it. So on that day, I came for the interview, and um, um, with God's grace, it turned out really well. So right now, um, Mr. Duque just told me that I was accepted, and I would just um, be waiting for my acceptance in order to push through with that program. Well, my dream for myself is to be a nurse here in this country. Because I wouldn't want my career to go down, I would like it to improve and I would also like to be globally competent as a nurse. Um, because it's not, just being enough, it's, not, it's not just enough being a carer in this country when I know that uh, I can be more. So being um, accepted at an ONP course and sooner or later um, getting my, the pin of my own would be a really good dream for me. I'm a nurse back in the Philippines and in America. Um, I'm here on student visa, um, currently studying <coughs> NVQ3. I work in a care home in um, London, Hammersmith. When I applied here, um, I know that it was going to be a care assistant, as said by my um, agency. And then I thought that it was... Um, I thought that it was um, an easy job when I was still back in the Philippines. And then when I came here,
<laughs> it's not easy. It's <clears throat> the care home is really <clears throat> stressful <laughs> because um, I'm mostly I'm on a day shift. And usually we're only two carers there and one nurse. And um, yeah. we have 38 clients. All of them have amnesia. Oh, no, dementia, um, <coughs> schizophrenia, um, other mental disabilities. And it's, um, I could, um, easily accept <laughs> these things and uh, um, that the care home is um, a stressful place. Um, but, um, <coughs> but the people who are in there are, are rude and they don't treat everyone um, equally. So it's just because I'm Filipina. And I'm Filipina, and um, some, um, I'm just going to tell you this. Um, there was one time, this nurse, I think, um, I don't, I don't want to say the race, you know. This, this nurse, and then she, she was calling on the phone on how to do insulin administration. And then I told him, what, I told her what to do. So I, I was just, I didn't tell her exactly what to do. I just told him some information on how to do an insulin administration on how to, to mix the vials and all that. So I said, what are you talking about? You're just a carer. And it's like, you know, it's, it's degrading. First of all, I, don't, I didn't say anything because I don't, I don't want to get in trouble in the nursing home because that, <coughs> excuse me, that's my only job. Just someday, <laughs> I could be a nurse here, but as they said, there are obstacles. I would like to do, I have done IELTS already, but it's all, <laughs> always, always been 6.5 and 7. Just 6, it doesn't really go just for 5. Points. It's really frustrating. I just hope one day NMC will just make it <laughs> on a lower, on a lower sco band score, because there are also nurses there. I mean, some European nurses who can't even speak English. How come there are nurses who can also speak English as well? Yeah. <laughs> That's why, maybe, still maybe, I'm hoping one day. I could um, be able to be a nurse here and, and people will not be degrading me just because I am just a carer. When I was in Israel, I worked there for six months and we're having a problem about the working permit as well. So all Filipinos are struggling to find another job in, other home, in another country. So my friends were applied to the agency going here, so they informed me about it. So I tried to apply, and I got the luck to accept here because they are hiring a medical graduate. So when I came here, I work in a nursing home, and they, I, I got a work permit for five years. But I haven't finished the five years contract on my first employer. I got a problem. I tried to apply. I tried to find another employer. So I found an employer, and they are willing to, to renew my work permit. And then the immigration didn't respond to the employer until I lost my job. So by, that time, by then, I really have a difficulties. I struggle a lot because losing my job, it's really, really very hard for me 
especially I'm a single parent, I have kids sporting in college, in high school, my accommodation, I couldn't be able to pay my accommodation, my telephone bills since I moved here in London. I was in, in countryside before. Almost 11 months, I'm struggling without a job while I'm still having the kids going to college and in high school. So all my savings in the Philippines are gone, totally gone. In God's grace, I found a job now. And so I'm still struggling for applying for this residency because of the changes of the law. This, applying for residency, it's really hard. They ask you to pay for more than 1,000 pounds. And you don't, and I don't even know where to get that money, and I don't know how to save that money, for, because I just got a job last January, and from the job it's only ten months. And now I'm still struggling, and for a disapplying residency. And now I refer to the organization Kanlunga. I hope they will be success for this. I'm looking forward for this to achieve for my residency and later for my citizenship.